Oi, oi, welcome back to a brand new episode of Charm City Beat. The Ravens went up over to London, beat the Tennessee Titans. Hey, it's a great day and we're going to talk about it. And that is my worst British accent. <laughs> but yes, the Ravens did pick up the big victory. First international victory for the Ravens this uh, past weekend. Um, guys, what a game. What a game. Yeah. Chip, chip, uh, Governor. <laughs> felt felt like the, the start of the game, all they knew was how to kick kick the ball because that's what they used to over there. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> like, you know, you can score not by kicking the kicking the ball. You know, yeah, what the hell is that soccer I was watching? I mean, I mean football. Oh, man. You know, Sander, it's a London game when Justin Tucker's breaking records for kicking. <laughs> <laughs> Uh no, but um yeah, they picked up the win 24 to 16. Um yeah, a lot to be said about this game. Zay Flowers, first touchdown. Good for him. Couldn't do it in America though. Uh, no, I didn't like it. I, I didn't like it. <laughs> Bruno's why I didn't like it. It took your moment away, Ross. <laughs> the one the one the one game I didn't want him to score. <laughs> I mean I wouldn't, I wouldn't have cared if, you know, everyone wasn't slipping and falling on the stupid field. Yeah. Nelly should have had a – Aguilar should have had a touchdown. Lamar was gone on that one, but just, just eh, t- t- touch your toe and you falls. Yeah. But, no, good good for him. Good for him. It's a big moment, too, because it, I think it gave the Ravens a little bit of breathing room in that first half, and it allowed them to sort of comfortably go into halftime – and they really didn't have to worry about it too much. And King mm-hmm. Henry had a big game, but he didn't. They they kept him at bay when they needed to, but it also allowed them to sort of play, keep their offense like the way they wanted to keep playing it. They didn't have to change their play calling at all. Yeah, I thought that was huge. We we yeah. did the one thing against Henry, which I Gerald just said in the last video. That's what do we do against Henry? Yeah. We'll give him nothing, 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 <laughs> nothing. Then boom, sixty something yards. I was like, I said that was gonna happen. Exactly. It happens every like game that. we play him. Exactly, just like that. And, and it's crazy. Like on the stat line, he had a great. You would think he had a great. No, he, he had one good run. That's it. I, I'll take that. I will take that. If that meant we beat him, I got to see Roquan versus uh Derrick Henry line up to get against each other. That that was pretty fun. Um, not the biggest fan of the nine a.m. start time. NFL, what's up, man? Like what time would it be for one, a, one a one p.m. game here for them? It was, it was one o'clock there. It was one o'clock there. No, I know it was one o'clock there. It should have been one o'clock here. So I guess that would make it like four or five, something like that. Six. Uh, yeah. The game. I mean, I did my. I was already up doing a yeah. birthday party, so it just yeah. would give me something to do while the blowing balloons and stuff. But I could totally feel everyone else's pain. That would not have normally been like engaged like that at that time of day. At least we're on the west anyway. coast. Oh shit! Let's go. They were up at six. Oh my god! Even five, five o'clock in California. Yeah. Midnight in in Hawaii, like Jesus. I mean, it was cool to like. I kind of, I just watched the game in bed. I was real comfortable. I fell asleep a little few times. So I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> basically, it was it was basically felt like a Ravens bye week without a Ravens bye week. Yeah, I got to get shit. Got to watch a Ravens game and then treat it like a bye week. Watch all the other games. Don't try to go to a pumpkin patch because everybody had the same idea. Oh. Yeah, that shit's up. <laughs> we went past one, like we went past one farm and we were just like, no, let's let's just go. No. <laughs> but back to the game. Um, yeah, you know, it was uh the 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 Tennessee Titans, I, again, I think they are pretty one-dimensional. We took out, we took down D Hop. Like he was virtually useless unless you touched him and then you got a penalty. It's like Jesus Christ, don't even don't like don't. Hey, Give it at El Beckham. Yeah, that's what we're here for. Talk about it. This is it. <laughs> I like this old guys. I guess they have they can get the flag just by looking at the ref. Mm-hmm. Beckham gets it too. Like I think some of his pass interference calls is a little flaky too sometimes, but it's just what it is. Like you just don't touch them. You know they're like yeah. they're super vets and but they're great ball players and. Shout out to the Ravens defense. They didn't buckle in the back end. They kept Derrick Henry. I mean, he's going to get his eventually. He's a very large man. He's yeah. just running very hard. 
He's and bigger than most him players ball, outside like this. It was like plays where they kind of like toss it to him and he's already running. Good luck. You're getting he's getting past the first level and he's probably destroying whatever cornerback is in his way. And losing Kyle Hamilton, like they did early on, did not help that because he's a very physical safety and he gets in that head, gets in that box. And we can talk about that too. But mm. yeah, let's talk about that because um valid or invalid, what y'all think? Like was it was pa- it the penalty record? penalty in the terms of NFL, penalty yes, ejection, no. Yeah. I I've I, I I know you go to New York. If the reps that are on the field calling the game don't think it's an ejection, why do you why why do you look at it later? Even he was like, "What? You don't have to be an expert lip reader to read what he said." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that that made no sense to me. I mean, again, I've seen it in college. Like dudes get like the rules in college are crazy. Like dudes will get ejected for like a game and a half or some shit. Like I remember one player was suspended after a head-to-head shot, and he couldn't play the first half of the next game. But in the NFL, I've seen these head-to-head shots happen all the time. Sure, they'll find the guy, they'll penalize him. But very rarely have I ever seen them get not, ejected. Not, and not when it's like that. I've seen him, if you clearly see him, yeah. bend over. and No, he went up, he came down. It's called gravity, which gravity was another Is stupid it? call happened in that game. <laughs> I don't know how they expect a 600-pound defensive end to float. Yeah. I, I watched a video before I started this. They were, the rest were just terrible across the board or something. Dude, last last night, Bill Giants got screwed. Yeah, 100%. It was a pass interference in the back of the end zone on the end play. It, the rest was terrible on this. Then uh, fucking Simmons can just dive into Zay Flowers' leg. and I'm glad Odell came over and just kneed him in the like, – yeah, come on. And shoved him down and – yeah, I'm surprised we got that flag because we know we have we've been getting dark players shoved for no reason. Like, yeah, let's get it out of here. Well, what sucks about Hamilton, he's now no longer a first time offender, so now he can get suspended if it happens again. And so, I don't hopefully, he doesn't change the way he plays because that kind of play is what got that fumble against Hayden Hurst in the playoffs last year, where it's yep. just like attack, attack, attack. And if he's thinking penalty, 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 he may not be as eager but also like protect your head young man like even if you didn't get penalized yeah. like that's just a dangerous play i mean i've seen people their careers end because they go helmet the helmet and they're yeah. just lying on the ground lifeless and it's just horrible to see so i mean i get why they did it it's unfortunate especially that on that stage and everything he's probably super pumped to be there and he got like 10 minutes of play time yeah it sucks i i, I read what, somewhere right off the happened they probably did it because of where it was like oh we need to show them this no this is we don't accept this this is this is not safe like I said if he Red legitimately card. launched if he launched no he he said he went up yes he got a red card they came back and looked at it later and ran up to him like ah. <laughs> tell you how you're out of here unbelievable yeah they wasted no time on that one yeah I don't know hmm. I think I think overall I'm watching the game I heard him say. Uh, 14th minute ejection. I was like, whoa, 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 what? He's been disqualified, huh? Even Hamilton was in the hole. Like, was there even a flag? I didn't think. Oh. Yeah, I don't even remember. But I mean, officiating's just been terrible, I think, across the NFL. I mean, me personally, you know, we'll, we'll put our little tin hats on for a second. Let's, let's follow me here. Follow me here, people. Is this maybe a possible front for AI? I knew the flag yeah. was coming. I was like, oh. what? AI yeah. officiating. Do you think that could be a possibility? I'm just saying, follow my tin hat here for a second. I feel like you know, you might see it in baseball before you see it in football. I think football is just so quick pace, bang, bang, everything matters. Like, mm-hmm. did the ball get there first type of thing? It might mean more reviews by New York, maybe somehow they can get that faster. Yeah. But I just, I think that would just not be good for the game because so much of it is. It's such a quick, it's such, yeah. it's not like he's tagging first base and did the foot get there first. It's so much more. All right, back down to earth now, back down to real time. Do you think, and this is something I thought about watching a few games this weekend, replays on officiating. How is that not a thing? I mean, I guess that's where New York is. That's that's hey, their job. We, talk, we, we literally had, we, we had a whole season where you could review pass interference calls and they never changed it. It's just like baseball does it. They're never going to want to make their guy look bad. 
Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a call like, oh, they're going to change that. That's clear evidence. Oh, the call stands. <laughs> what? Huh? Yeah. But what? Well, that's. It's, it it's, undermines they them. They just need to yeah. be accountable, but how? It's, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Well, here's the thing. In baseball, they have one. If the home plate umpire, a report will come out the next day. And I've seen a few people post. They'll show what this ball was a ball called a strike. How did it affect? And they've showed this guy's good. They'll show like Angel Hernandez. That's all well, over the hell of the fucking board because he's terrible. <laughs> yeah. All right. Do they even have to talk to the reporters after the game? Do they have like their pool guy go talk? Like, yeah, we suck. No, definitely not. Um, yeah, so much craziness. I mean, you never know. We'll see what happens. Again, I think this is a hotbed topic that's going to be in the conversation. Just at least the trend. It's just seemed like it's gone down with officiating over the last few years. But <clears throat> despite the Ravens, well, let's go back to the Ravens for a second. Despite that win. What happens in the second half? What what's going on? Because it's like there's this is a tale of two teams. We got this first team. This is a Super Bowl contender. This second team. What are y'all tired? Y'all gas? Like I don't get it. I I saw something today. We we progressively get worse offensively as the quarter goes on. I I don't I don't I don't like it. We need to know how to start putting people away. Mm-hmm. Don't get any easier second either. Like, second, six points. The second half of the season, it's like the 49ers. It's the Steelers again. It's the Bengals. We play the Lions this Sunday coming up. Um, I think we play the Miami. Chargers. Miami Dolphins. Like, we need to learn how to put points up all game. And I'm hoping, like, they play up. I hope the Bengals game, they did a good job of doing that a little bit. Um, I thought the, the Texans game, they were, a, they were not a good first half team. I just I think it's I don't know what it is. I'm hoping it's just not no they're not comfortable with the offense yet type of thing. But it's, I think it's on Harbaugh a little bit to keep them going, and Lamar Jackson finding a way to get because they did this last year too. Where they how many games did they blow because they just stopped scoring in the second half and then the defense was like, well, we did our thing and we're also done, and so they all just played three quarters of football and decided that was enough. It's yeah. not good because we've lost all. We should be undefeated, and it's because they can't find a way to put teams away. Yeah, it's it's incredibly frustrating. Um, we almost gave up that game. That's the wild part about it. Like we could have lost that game. It was very close, and I, there's there's no way they would have been able to come back to the country. Honestly, I'm be real with you. Uh, there's no way. <laughs> Stay over there. Just just <laughs> London Raiders. Y'all, y'all take them. <laughs> yeah, you want your team? Here's your team. Yeah, I want to. Yeah. Jesus Christ, they can't win for shit over it. But nope, they finally got that monkey out their back. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, when you start talking about that, you know, start talking about the second half offense, you also got to talk about this red zone offense where it's just we have Lamar Jackson, the most athletic quarterback to probably ever play in the NFL, hands down. And we don't, I don't know, we have Gus Edwards. A 240-pound running back. We have Pat Ricard, Ross's boy. We don't do enough scoring, and I, I don't know what it is. It's like we're scared to throw down the field, but we're all about weird pass plays and trying to be cute in the red zone, and it just completely falls apart and fails. Again, goes back to hardball. <laughs> what, what's going on down there, man? I, I don't get it. You got Mark Andrews too. Like it's got Mark Andrews, shit. And you have Odell Beckham, who's I think that's the biggest reason they brought him in is to get the because the red zone was so god awful last year in the Great Roman. And at the start of the season, they were like eighty percent down there. Like it was like, mm-hmm. let's go. And then it is just deteriorated. And it's just it's unfortunate to see. And now I think he's a little bit gun shy because of the pick last week in Pittsburgh. There's a horrific throw. Well, my, horrific play. The drops. It's those two drops. He had but two short hair and touchdowns. Ross, we're he scared the my thing is this is my thing. We we number one, this is as a former lineman, let's get down and dirty. Let's run offense. I don't understand how our ground game isn't our bread and butter. 
we have some of the best runners in the NFL just on Lamar Jackson's feet alone. I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. Think our, our offensive lineman doesn't seem to be pushing people out of the way anymore. It doesn't make it, sense. It, that, <laughs> that's the. It seems like our offensive line just doesn't get that push it used to in the past years. Like, yeah, maybe we miss Ben Powers more than we thought we were going to at left guard. I, so I also feel like they don't. I mean, maybe. They're not running it down like north south down in the end zone. They get real cute. I think one of the plays got they got pushed because they went towards their like all pro defensive tackle on the left side. Yeah. Just go right. Or like the, the plays where like Lamar Jackson runs it tend to be the most successful because they can't get him behind the line of scrimmage and they just seem to stop running it down there. And maybe to keep him healthy, I don't know, but like spread it out and and if Lamar, if the, Lamar has a lot better chance to score when you've got five wide receivers in the field and they've got to count for five receivers and the running back. Yep. It just seems it's like they're getting, they're getting super vanilla, super predictable. Pat Ricard's in the field. You know they're going it's, it's, to – it's just not good. Like, as, as great as Mockin seems to be, he just doesn't – there's nothing – there's no bag of – he just doesn't know how to, like, yeah. score. It's frustrating. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, we're moving down the field. That's the, that's the wild part about it. we move so well down the field. But then it's like we get we get in the red zone. Mm. That, that's not <laughs> what we want. <laughs> it's it's wild. Oh, man. But yeah, so again, hopefully we figure out a red zone offense because again. Uh, the rest of our division had somewhat of a okay week. Steelers, of course, had to buy a week, but the Browns and Bengals. First off, talk about the Browns for a second. Who are the Browns? I, now, again, I get it. Debo Samuel got injured. And McCaffrey. And McCaffrey. And McCaffrey. All right. That and Trent Williams. Williams. And it was on the road in the West Coast. They stay, in Dogtown. They, 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 they are lucky they got that one. They, they, yeah. Kicker who hasn't missed anything all year missed two field goals. <laughs> That's the NFL for you, though. Like any yeah. given Sunday, any team can win. They did not earn that win, but agreed. It's unfortunate because there was an opportunity. The Ravens had an opportunity to really pull away. And it really, the loss last week to Pittsburgh and even the loss to the Colts, it really, they had an opportunity to blow this. Now all of a sudden, the Bengals are three and three. Browns have a super easy schedule now in the next few games and the Ravens still have to play the 49ers and the Dolphins and all these other teams are just like <laughs> it makes me a little nervous and they had an opportunity didn't to take the bye week this weekend. Wow. Do you think that's a bad idea because they now have it at the end of the year where we might be a little banged up and it's a chance to hit refresh with like four weeks to go versus now that's, we'll see how they play that's... against Detroit. I'm not excited about the fact that we play them so quickly after coming back from Look at what Buffalo did. They laid an egg against the Giants coming back from England. I'm a little afraid. Uh, fingers crossed. I, I, I kind of brought that up back to now, now we get in the air. Oh, someone's slightly hurt. Oh, look, we have bye week to go into the stretch where we have the we'll have the Steelers after that. We'll have the Dolphins after that. Like I said, we got the in fact we got to win. See the thing is the Bills got the loss in London yeah. and then had to come back. We at least got the win. So, and it's not like we're <laughs> playing, and also we're not playing the Giants. We're playing a decent team. Yeah. That's what makes the Bills look worse. They played the Giants. I saw that at half and was like, are they are they losing 6 nothing? What What is happening here? Yeah. In their house, in prime time. Uh, yeah, I was, I was, listen, I had to watch Josh Allen because that's my QB. Um, I'm so glad I had him. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Stephon did his part for me. It he was tried. looking real suspect for a minute. I was like, what the hell is going on? I mean, hopefully the Ravens, you know, again, the Ravens kind of, I think they did it good. You know, they got to London early. They got regulated. They're back now. You would, I mean, you never know. Again, jet lag is a weird thing. And, you can't tell me they didn't plan Terrell Suggs on purpose for that game against the Lions. It's an opportunity to get the crowd pumped up. Yeah. Um, I think Ravens might get pumped up because of it. And hopefully we can just that's gonna be a hell of a ball game. Detroit is a 
damn good ball club. They're a good team. <laughs> so I even if we didn't have a bye week, I don't feel the greatest about that. Um, but we have the number two defense in the NFL, number two scoring defense in the NFL, number two red zone defense in the NFL. As long as we can put up some goddamn points in the red zone, we should win the football game. Because the Lions, you know, Jared they're Goff not isn't fast. the greatest. They're a little suspect in some places. Jared Goff isn't a fast quarterback. I think Matt Abike, our edge rushers coming off the edge. Pat Queen, who we're going to talk about in a couple of seconds. I, I think the odds are in our favor as long as we come out strong. Again, like you said, it really just depends on the freaking offense. You know, we lead the NFL in sacks right now. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's wild to me. And I, I think it's and it's with um Clowney leading the team with three and a half. Like it's not a lot of sacks. It shows a combined effort. And that's with OA being hurt and Bowser have a lot being of people hurt sacked. and a job done for the year. And they didn't bring back Clays Campbell. And they, you know, like they didn't do a lot of things and yet we're sitting yeah. sitting really pretty. And I think just goes well for the second half that our defense is playing so well. It does. It really does. I mean, again, I, I feel like at least as of the years late, the Ravens defense has kind of been under the radar. And even when I heard, I was like, really? We, 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 we're, we're leading in sacks. I mean, it, it makes sense. I mean, shit, Matt BK is back in the backfield every freaking play. I swear to God, he, his development looking back over the last few years is incredible. Um, yeah. One of my favorite Ravens currently right now, hands down, dude is just a, Bees, Pat Queen. Um, again, and you know, we'll get out of the way. Game ball goes down to Pat Queen. God save Pat Queen. Um, by the way, this is my first time hearing the new anthem for England, God Save the King. That's mm, right. Yeah. I, I I I thought I I cracked up the fact that like I said, we go over there, hey, hey, let's sing the anthem, but we beat you. Ha ha. And then ours all about. Freedom, we're free, and there's just literally about a king. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, okay, monarchs and democracies. <laughs> I liked it. I thought it was good. Song. It was cool. It was cool. That was, was a nice song. Okay. I've heard it before. I was like, oh, that's their anthem. Okay. No, yeah, that was the first. That was the first time I've heard the King version though, because obviously yeah. King have been around, you know, forever. Um, but <laughs> yeah, like, I was like, oh wow, that's different. That's cool. Yeah, but uh, game ball to pack queen. Nine total tackles, two assists, one sack. Again, got to find a way to keep him next year. Got to find a way. I mean, he, he, he man is playing like a man possessed. I think we're lucky he's a linebacker. I think he will be cheaper. Yes. And I think he might take the hometown discount. I don't think he will, but if he chose to play without a contract this year, I think because of the situation that he's in, playing alongside mm-hmm. Patrick Queen. And I think, I mean, sorry, we're going to Smith. And so I think if he sits back and he's like, they're giving me a pretty competitive offer. And if no team blows me out of the water, like, I don't know, like the Darius Smith got with the Packers, like, yeah. I think he stays because I think it's an opportunity to flourish and win ball games and just do what he does best. Where if you get, I think he's probably quite aware that he's not the same person if he doesn't have a pet. Roquan Smith playing alongside him. So if he yeah. goes to like a Pittsburgh or something, he's a, he's a Bart Scott. Yeah, exactly. He's a Ed Hartwell. Yeah. Thomas. I mean, mm-hmm. the list goes on. I think they're just like that. That's a good, it's a good analogy. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's a good, he's a good one. He's a good one, eh? He's a good, he's a good Robin of Batman. Yep. Because here's the thing I think expecting him to run a defense is just too much. He's an athlete. He is just let me fly around, hit people, do what I got to do. He, he, some people, need the structure some people just need to be free some people just need to go nuts and that is pat queen and and it's good because we have roquan who as i mean essentially runs that defense i mean dude every time i look at a defense it just reminds me of 2005 just like the old school mid 2000 defense like that kyle hamilton em, embodies that roquan embodies that marlin getting back up to speed embodies that and that d-line obviously we've been talking about him for the last five minutes but again it it's great to see. It's great to see a defense that just looks so efficient. I, I don't think there's a better word, just efficient. Yeah, but um, honorable mention, um, Zay Flowers, first touchdown, as we mentioned earlier in the show. Um, maybe, hopefully, you'll get one this weekend. <laughs> 
they're definitely going to be aiming to do it. <laughs> they're going to try. It's definitely going to be in the game plan. But um, that right, does it for our show. Um, any last thoughts? Um, I think obviously no honorable mention here, but Gino 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 Stone with his NFL tying leading fourth interception this past weekend. And that one was the most Ed Reed of them all with the, you know, the catch and turn. And, he, and I think it's just, it's a, it's a great play by a guy who's also in a contract year that probably isn't going to be here next year because he's probably playing his way out of the Ravens. Um, But just that whole secondary Marcus Williams had a great game and that I think he had a game where he, he, he had a deflection on a play and he, he's the one that knocked uh, Henry down on that long run. And he know he made a business decision tackling him the way he did to save his arm. He suffered a hamstring, so hopefully he's okay. But And then, obviously, Stevens had a huge game. Without Kyle Hamilton on the field, those guys stepped up. And as a whole unit, it's a big reason why the Ravens are where they are and their ability to rush the pass and play defense and let Pat Queen do his thing because the secondary has been locked down this year. So shout out to them. Now, you mentioned Gino for a second. Let's talk about that. Um, with Marcus William, obviously injuries are starting to stack up. This is getting in obvious dangerous territory. Could that encourage the Ravens to try to keep Gino? Personally, I think they're going to try, but I think he's one of those guys where that's a huge position in this game. And Mm -hmm. I can see a team throwing a lot of money at him because he's young, because he, he produces like he's a great story. He's yet another Raven that came from the bottom and now he's here. And yep. I just, I just wonder if the Ravens can keep all these guys and pay Lamar Jackson, whose contract's going to get heavy very soon. And you gotta, you gotta pay some of these five yard players. And yeah, I mean, Zay Flowers is going to be cheap. And if that's coming up and those kind of things, and I just wonder if you can throw money at a safety when you have Marcus Williams and you've got Kyle Hamilton locked up probably forever. That's true. Yeah. So I saw some everyone's been, you know, eh, ADC, he can't draft. He, someone pointed out his 2020 defensive draft. Oh my God. They're all hitting now. Looks, we got, so he can draft, just not offense at that point. Yeah. He might have finally got one now with Zay. That's, he's, Someone pointed out all the receivers that are drafted, you know, ones before him are drafted. Everyone wanted to rape. Yeah, he's he's doing better than them. Yeah. The guy in Seattle, hey. guy in LA. Jackson and Jibba. I'm, I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting for his 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 breakout game. That's gonna be a fun one. It's coming down the line. I, I, I mean, then again, who knows? Because again, just the way this offense is built, where one moment it's hot, the next moment it's cold as ice. I, I'm waiting for his first hundred yard game. Just ma- imagine if he got hit on that slant that o- OBJ got hit on. Yeah. If Zay takes that, Zay is gone. The only way he's not is if he trips over his own feet. He's, he's going too fast up the middle. I think the Pittsburgh game, he would have had I a thought Odell was going to catch. <laughs> he left a lot out there last week against Pittsburgh, <laughs> for sure. Oh, and don't forget, we drafted Linderbaum, too. Yeah. yeah. No, that definitely should have been Zay's game last weekend. What a story that would have been. Um, oh, Ross, what are you saying? Nothing. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I'm – just glad we walked away with the win. Jesus, that's all we needed. You know, a good bounce back win. Again, the Titans kind of have become the Raven, kind of re- reignited that rivalry from the early 2000s. Um, you know, and it's, you know, just two nasty, hard-nosed teams just going at it. You know, John Harbaugh and Mike Vrabel don't probably like each other. Respect. I think there's respect, but they just don't seem like they like each other, rightfully so. And the Ravens de- and Titans definitely don't like each other. Um, no, it was a great game. Uh, exciting, but just, can we, can we stop with the London games for the Ravens? I'm, I'm tired of waking up early for games. I'm, I'm done with it. It's only the second you, one. That's enough. Two's enough, man. Two's and enough. And how, uh, the last one was in 2017. It, it was, no, nah, man, I'm going, I'm going to Germany Jackson. next. Lamar Jackson this week looks like. Brazil. Mm-hmm. I can't wait for more London games, and this is amazing. 
was like, no, Lamar, stop it. Stop talking. Say less, bro. Say less. They're, they're a sexy team in London, and I think they'll keep going oh, yeah. back. And I think they're, they're the Ravens. Like, Ravens guard the Tower of they London. They fit the aesthetic so well. It's not it's even like, funny. Yeah, there's, and Lamar Jackson's such a fun player that I think mm-hmm. that I can see us going back a lot. We're, we're definitely going back. <laughs> As long as we're not like the Jaguars who play half their season in England. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> no, but um, yeah, very, very good weekend. Good bounce back. Uh, head into the Lions. We'll talk about that probably sometime this weekend. Um, won't get too much in that. But uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to that video. Uh, stay tuned for more content. And go Ravens.